just super quickly, thank you so much for the bread and for everything that came with it. I've just stuffed my face and it's so delicious. Oh my God, this bread is amazing, Nadja. You are amazing. And thank you so much for talking about it as well. Okay. Love it. Um, just, um, yeah, I'm just here to talk quickly. I'm Olio Hercules. I've written um, three cookbooks on kind of Eastern European and um, uh, food and food from Caucasus. Uh, my latest one, Summer Kitchens, which has a rye um, bread recipe in it. But I've got a disclaimer. Actually, I come from the part of Ukraine, from the south, where uh, wheat is king. We don't, we don't, it's too hot for rye to grow. So I don't actually have any family recipes and it hasn't been cooked in our family, but it has been around. So I did grow up with rye bread, but my interest peaked actually weirdly um, a few years ago when I, um, when I was researching Summer Kitchens, uh, the cookbook, um, and also I stumbled um, across this book uh, called The Russian Journals by John Steinbeck, and it's about his journey around Russia, Ukraine, and Georgia in the, in the in kind of mid-1940s. He went there with uh, Robert Kupfer, I think, with the photographer, and it's just an incredible book. And I've picked a couple of uh, quotes. Uh, so this is from his journey to uh, Ukraine. He starts in Russia, he goes to Georgia and Ukraine, and then he finishes in Russia as well. Um, so he just describes uh, the, the, the house first, a, a Ukrainian house in the village. I think they were in a village somewhere near Kiev, uh, which is kind of like central, central northern Ukraine. There is a hall, uh, which is a combination of storeroom and entrance. From there, one goes into the kitchen, a white plaster room with a brick oven and hearth for the cooking. That fireplace and oven is raised above four feet above the floor, and in this, the bread is baked flat brown cakes of Ukrainian bread, which is very good. Uh, I really love this and I was really intrigued by his description of it as a um, flat brown cake of Ukrainian bread. And that's why in Summer Kitchens, I've got this guy, which is kind of like, it, it did, when I developed it, it did actually come out. It's, it's the simplest recipe, it's sourdough. Uh, but it's whole, it's all whole rye sourdough and some uh, seeds and a little bit of molasses. Um, and it's, you know, it's a really big ratio of kind of like crust and not much inside, but the crust is so good. Like that's what you want to eat. And then there's a couple of other uh, quotes from Steinbeck. There's this woman in the village that he keeps calling Mamuchka, but I think he means Mamuchka, which means mommy in Russian. So he says Mamuchka is very, is a very famous cook in the village and a very good one. Her meals were unbelievable. Supper that night began with uh, water glasses of vodka with pickles and home-baked black bread. Um, he then says, um, he continues to describe, we began with black bread, it's a, that's another meal, pickles, tomatoes, and vodka, and then there was Ukrainian borscht with sour cream and a huge stew of meat cooked in some way so that the spices had gone into the potatoes themselves. He loved it. Uh, he ate loads and they were just, um, it's just such an incredible story. I highly recommend that you read it. Um, in terms of uh, my research, so I went to uh, North uh, Ukraine and Northwestern Ukraine where they do actually use, uh, grow rye and, and make a lot of rye bread. And one really interesting thing um, that um, I, I've been told in, the, in this village uh, called Kosmach, which is the biggest village of Uk in Ukraine, weirdly. It consists of 30 little village villages, uh, and the Hutsul people live here. So they are kind of like uh, the Ukrainian highlanders. So it's high up in the mountains. They work really hard. Uh, you know, there's loads of shepherding going on. There's loads of polenta dishes. You know, we know of, uh, maybe if you've heard of banosh, which is like a really thick polenta porridge that they cook with like thick sour cream and milk. It's really rich and delicious, but they've got another like 10 varieties of uh, kind of maize uh, dishes that they cook. And the woman that, um, Hanna, that uh, gave me quite a few recipes and told me about how they live, she told me that back in the day, the way that they used to make rye bread, they used um, a, a sourdough kind of starter. Initially it was a starter. Then they'd bake the, bre the bread and then, and it would be normally cooked once a, once a week to last you the whole week, because obviously you're gonna to be too busy during the week doing your um, you know, hard work that you're doing. And what they would do, they would pinch off a little bit of the bread of the dough that's uh, for your bread making, 
which contains all of the sour uh, kind of uh, you know sourdough yeast etc wild yeasts and they would keep this piece of dough inside the sack with the rye flour which I found really interesting I haven't heard of that before uh, so I guess it will be encased by all of the flour and will kind of you know dry out during the week and then they would just take it out rehydrate it etc and that was something interesting that I found um, another thing was um, the starters themselves, uh, obviously rye flour would be used, but also sometimes even uh, straw, oats and barley. Um, then what else? In uh, Western Ukraine, with the rye flour, they also used barley flour quite a lot. In Northwestern Ukraine, uh, they used, uh, Northwest, sorry, the scolding technique that Nadia uh, talks about. So I guess this is closer to the Belarusian uh, border. Uh, the scolding technique is uh, used quite a lot. And then uh, in central Ukraine, oh, sorry, and in western Ukraine, they also added maize uh, flour with the rye. And in central Ukraine, um, sorry, I've got just my notes here. So I don't tell you a lie. Buckwheat flour was used as well. So rye and buckwheat, which is really interesting. Obviously, rye is the main kind of ingredient. And then you had little bits of whatever else would be found in the area. And actually, if uh, it was a year with really bad, with a really bad harvest, in kind of not completely starvation years, but you know, if your harvest is bad, you would uh, grate some beetroot or some carrots, and add that. Uh, then um, another thing that they used to use was uh, nettles, and also, and I guess this is more when things were really quite bad, uh, you, they would use uh, ground up acorns and even uh, oak uh, bark, ground up and mixed with uh, rye flour, which is quite interesting. Uh, and, and obviously potatoes, that's kind of like when potatoes appeared in Ukraine, you know, if you had potatoes, you'd make them into the bread as well. Um, and just, um, I know that we're short for time, so I just want, oh yeah, and just one more thing I wanted to mention. So. Uh, of course, families cooked it and every family would have their own recipe, but I think some of the most interesting rye bread recipes are kept, and it's a little bit of a secret, uh, you know, would be kept in monasteries. So, um, uh, you know, there would be a special bakery and they still exist. Uh, and that's something that I would really love to do one day. God knows when that's going to be uh, uh, possible. But uh, that's a really interesting thing to do, actually, to go to monasteries and find all of these really old recipes, which I'm sure have been kept for, you know, centuries have been passed on. And finally, just with a bit of a light uh, kind of ending to this, just a couple of sayings, just to show you how important um, rye bread is in Ukraine, uh, just like uh, borscht is, <laughs> you know, the, all of the ridiculous borscht wars have been going on. Um, uh, but um, bread is also extremely important in Ukraine. And um, one of the sayings is, Bude chlip, bude pisnia, which means if there is bread, there will be a song, there shall be a song too. Um, uh, another one is rye bread, specifically rye bread is the head of everything. Um, Another one is riba ne chlip ne you sit in the budish, which means fish is not bread, it won't make you full. Uh, another one is chlip batich kovodica matushka, which means uh, bread is your father and water is your mother. Uh, and then a really uh, another good one uh, is jak te salo ne chvali bez chliba ne zjiste. However good the lardo is, you can't eat it without bread. So, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you can put it on potatoes, but for Ukrainians, you really got to have that rye bread to put your salo on to uh, make it all work. And obviously a shot of vodka, as Steinbeck uh, has testified. Thank you so much for um, inviting me to speak and I hope you enjoyed this little introduction. Thank you so much, Oli. That was great. <laughs>